What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about some Scarlet and Violet DLC news. Now, I have to apologize here. The audio on this video is gonna be a little bit scuffed compared to my regular setup because I'm not at my apartment right now. I'm, you know, I'm at my parents' place, so I'm on a different microphone, but bear with me here uh, and we're in a different environment. Anyways, we have a lot to talk about. Obviously, we have a lot of news regarding um, new features coming to the DLC, which I will cover those briefly, but what I wanna talk about more than anything are gonna be these new Pokemon and some of the implications to competitive battling that uh, we got a little bit of um, info on in this uh, trailer that was shown today in the Direct. But yeah, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And answer my comment question of the day, which is, what are you most excited about in the DLC? Anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. So yeah, like I said, I'm going to be covering mostly the competitive side of things and what I find to be most interesting. Unfortunately, um, Pokemon does not give as much info on the English website as they do the Japanese website. So we're going to be switching between them and we'll also be using the Victory Road Twitter for some uh, extra uh, context and information. So yeah, let's go ahead and begin. First things first, we have to talk about these new Pokemon, which are the, well, not these guys. Actually, did we get a typing for these guys yet? We did not get a typing for these guys yet. We still the same info as before, but these guys, where are you? Here it is. These guys, I don't know why these guys are separate, but um, we're going to talk about some of the new Pokemon that were announced today, whether it be the Paradox Raikou and Paradox Cobalion or the new Duraludon Evolution. I believe it was called, what was it called? Uh, Archaladon, which awesome, awesome name. You know, he's an arch, he's a bridge, it's whatever. This guy's interesting though. We're going to begin with the new Appleton Evolution known as, excuse me, I already forgot the name, Driplin. So this is all from the Japanese website, by the way. Um, we get like some info on it, some screenshots as to how it works, but it has a really interesting ability that I want to talk about. So Driplin, it is Grass and Dragon, much like Flapple and Appleton. You know, obviously they wouldn't add like a third Evo that just breaks that rule. Or who knows? They're Pokemon. They're weird. Uh, but it has a new ability that's really interesting called Super Sweet Syrup. Super Sweet being one word. Awesome. And it lowers the opponent's evasion when it's sent out. Now, that is a really big implication for one reason. And we'll talk about Duralda in a second here. But um, there are a lot of moves. Ignore the ads. Like, I'm on my laptop. I don't have my usual setup. But uh, there are a lot of moves in competitive Pokemon that the only reason they're not like super reliable is because of evasions or because of accuracy. For example, Groudon is a Pokemon that suffers from this with its move, Precipice Blades. Now, Precipice Blades is a phenomenal move. 120 power, 85 accuracy. It's stronger than Earthquake and it doesn't hit your partner, but at the expense of, you know, not being entirely accurate. And that's kind of annoying, you know? Uh, it becomes very difficult to land your Precipice Blades. So this Pokemon lowering the opponent's evasion stat actually effectively increases this thing's accuracy where it's hitting like every time. So that's, real. I don't want to do the math, but I remember it's like every time. <laughs> so yeah, um, this means that while a lot of people might think like, oh, you know, this ability to lower evasion is kind of lame. It's kind of useless. No, it's a really big deal, especially for, you know, Groudon and also Pokemon that want to take advantage of moves like Sleep Powder, Hisuian Lilligant, Jumpluff, um, Venusaur. Obviously, these are grass types, so maybe not those ones. But also Hypnosis is fairly accurate when you add on that, um, that one little bit of... Um, evasion drop. So faster Pokemon with access to Hypnosis would be your Iron Valiants, your Alolan Persians, your Spothras. These are all Pokemon that actually would very much appreciate this boost. So that's really cool. As for the stats, um, we kind of have to take a look at Appleton and Flapple to get an idea as to how it's going to function. And this one's really interesting where Appleton is like a bulky special attacker and Flappleton, or Flappleton, and Flapple is a sort of frail physical attacker. This third evolution we can assume is going to have the same base stat total, which is going to be 485, but it almost feels like a Hitmontop situation where it's going to be the best of both worlds. I think it's going to have middling stats across the board, right? So, I don't know, maybe we'll it doesn't seem like it's gonna hit that hard right this guy like it's hard to tell where he's going it's I, I have no idea how the stats are gonna be like distributed but if we just like think about it for a second if we have you know if we have the um where is it physical frail attacker and the bulky special attacker the only place we can really go is like 
sort of bulky, doesn't hit terribly hard, probably a mixed attacker set, or I would actually imagine it's probably a special attacker just based on its design. You know, its signature move definitely seems like it's going to be a special attack uh, based off the description alone, uh, Syrup Bomb. So, you know, let's talk about that. Lowers the opponent's speed for three turns. Now, I don't know if it deals damage. Let's actually take a look at the... Um, it doesn't really say. It looks like... There's no screenshot indicating if it deals damage or not. And the, you know, this doesn't say anything either. Um, but that actually is kind of an interesting um, signature move. I kind of hope it traps them too. It doesn't say it traps it, but it sort of reminds me of Graplock signature move, which was Octolock. Octolock uh, was actually uh, a move that didn't deal any damage, but for the course of, you know, as long as they stayed in, Graplock would lower their defense and special defense at the end of each turn. If Super Sweet Syrup lowers the speed at the end of each turn, that could be interesting. I mean, it doesn't exactly say how it functions, right? So there are a couple of directions we can interpret this. It could be like, oh, hey, um, you know, Super Sweet Syrup hits both of the opponents, and it looks like it does because it's opponents with like uh, an apostrophe at the end of the S, um, and that lowers their speed for, you know, three turns. So every turn it gets a little bit slower and slower, meaning that your speed tier is going to be a lot better in comparison. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Again, like another decent partner for Groudon in that sense. But it could also be like an environmental thing, like almost like a hazard, right? So the entire other side of the field might have its speed lowered every three turns rather than it being like oh it, it has now been hit by this move that pokemon specifically so if you switch out and switch in a new pokemon that pokemon won't have its speed lowered or it could be whatever pokemon's on the field for the next three turns they're gonna have their speed lowered like it might be a field target thing sort of like how haze targets the field and not a specific pokemon which is why haze can hit golden go you know that sort of thing so that could be interesting um next up i want to talk about the new pokemon uh what was he called I'm, I'm so bad at names, Archulodon or Archalodon. Now this one's insane. And while I was hyping up, um, while I was hyping up the Eviolite Duraludon on Twitter, I actually don't think Eviolite Duraludon is going to be like the wave, you know? Um, I think that Archalodon might outclass it because of one specific thing, but we'll get into that. So let's talk about Duraludon for a second. This feels like a King Gambit situation where King Gambit is an evolution of a Pokemon that no one really was asking for an evolution for, Bisharp, right? Bisharp, a powerful steel type Pokemon with some pretty impressive stats. If you actually look at it, it's like got stats comparable to Duraludon. What's its base stat total? 490, where Duraludon's base stat total is. Let me go to National Deck so it actually shows me. Uh, Duraludon's base stat total is 535. Okay, maybe it's a little higher. <laughs> Well, King Gambit took those stats and said, hey, move over. I have higher base stats. It's insane, right? And now Bisharp has access to Eviolite, which could be kind of crazy, but it wasn't actually. Eviolite Bisharp's bad. Stop trying to make it work. Duraldon, on the other hand, already has some really impressive stats, so I actually don't see this thing getting a huge stat buff. I see it getting, like, buffs where it needs it, and then what's going to make it, like, a real evolution is going to be the ability changes that it has as well as the signature move that is going to be absolutely insane. We'll get to that in a second. So Duraldon is interesting because it has the ability Stalwart and it coming back in the DLC means that we have some actually pretty decent counterplay to redirection stuff. For example, um, Mousehold Annihilate is something that's been like pretty decent in the entire generation which is very scary, you know, Mouthful and I, like, you follow me, you bulk up, you beat up, you do whatever, you know, that's, that's terrifying. Um, also, Clefairy is coming back, so having redirection counter to Clefairy is going to be really big, and in DD Armourge has also been a thing, so, you know, that's another thing that Duraldon's going to go pretty positive into. But, one could argue that the other two stocks are going to go down, meanwhile, Duraldon in, uh, in Mousehold, or rather, our Chaladon and Mousehold stocks will go up. Why is this? Because our Chaladon has the new, uh, well, not new, it's an ability that existed, but it now has access to the ability Stamina and Sturdy rather than Light Metal and Heavy Metal. And, you know, mind you, Light Metal and Heavy Metal were some pretty garbage abilities to give Duraldon in the first place. Um, now it actually has access to a pretty decent ability in Sturdy and Stamina. Sturdy meaning that, you know, our Chaladon isn't going to be one shot by like Presbus Blades or a special move it's, if its special defense still is really low. Uh, and Stamina being absolutely absurd, uh, absurd on a Dragon and Steel type with access to Body Press because 
It already has like really good defense, but now every time it gets hit by a physical attack, its defense stat increases by one stage. I believe the only other Pokemon to have access to this is uh, Mudsdale, which already is like kind of annoying to deal with as a physical, um, as like, you know, a physical wall. But Duraldon has 70 HP, 115 defense. We can only imagine that Archaldon, because he's a bigger dude, is going to have a higher HP stat. My prediction is the defense stat is probably only going to go up by like five, but the HP stat might go up to like 100, if not like the 90s. So that's going to be a very annoying physically defensive wall. So yeah, Eevee Light Duraldon, possibly a thing. However, <laughs> Archaldon with Mouse Hold, and you just do the same thing you would do with like Mouse Hold Annihilate and side beat up with Friend Guard. You give it like a huge defense boost and then you click Body Press into something. That's going to be ridiculous. However, there is another set that it can run that is probably even more ridiculous. So Archaladon has this new has this new move, not ability, called Electro Beam. Turn one, it charges electricity, raising Dur or Archaladon's special attack step by one level. Turn two, it attacks. It skips the charge turn when rain is up. So Meteor Beam, but if rain is up, it skips the charge turn, which means it's still gonna like get plus one, right? I, at least I think it still gets plus one. I almost hope it doesn't, because that seems ridiculous. But just imagine this. Actually, I'm pretty sure this thing's gonna get slower, so maybe it's not that good. But uh, Politoed's coming back, right? So Politoed is a Pokemon that sets up rain. And it's already like a really good partner for a lot of steel types. Our child on no exception. Politoed tends to have access to Helping Hand. Imagine being a Terra Electric Archaladon, which definitely has at least 120 special attack. I'm going to guess 130 for the evolution. And then you Terra Electric and you click this move that is, we'll call it Solar Beam Power, 120 base power. We have no confirmation on that yet, but it's an electric move. You get plus one when you click it. And also in the rain, it goes immediately and you can helping hand it. That is a nuke. Not only that, but the counterplay to it being like Raichu or any like lightning rod Pokemon actually isn't true counterplay because our child then has the ability stalwart. Now it isn't confirmed as the ability stalwart, but you know, stamina and sturdy being the two regular abilities means that stalwart isn't out of the picture. I'd imagine it keeps stalwart. I don't see why they would only give it to one Pokemon and have it be like a mid evolution. So that is insane how good that Pokemon's probably gonna end up being. I'm really excited for that. Um, as for other things, we're actually gonna take a look at, um, you know, non-Pokemon news, or I guess we should probably talk about the new Pokemon still. I forgot that there are still new things to discuss. Um, we have new Paradox forms. These Paradox forms are for um, Entei, not Entei, uh, Raikou and Cobalion, and that is all we know. That is all we know about them. What are their names? Let me double check real quick. Um, Victory Road tweeted them out earlier. They are, sorry, where are the names? Excuse me, I don't have a pause record, or I don't have a pause button on this uh, computer for the recording. Raging Bolt based on Raikou and Iron Crown based on Cobalion. Pretty interesting. I don't have much else to say about them. I'm excited to see what they can do. My prediction is that they're going to have the exact same thing as Walking Wake and Iron Leaves, where it's just in electric terrain, their type move gets stronger and, and in sun their type move gets stronger. So, you know, Walking Wake being a water dragon type, you know, its move uh, was a water move. And despite that, it got stronger and the sun was up, which pairs well with Protosynthesis. I'm going to assume these guys do the same thing, but with like electric and steel moves um, respectively. So yeah, that's my prediction for them. We do have a little bit of news on this guy, um, Ogre Pond. And that's just that, yes, it, it's terrestrialization does give it a really cool mask form. Um, not, not much else known about that. Actually, let me translate this to English. Maybe it says something right here. Um, a new terrestrial form of Ogre Pond has been discovered. It looks different from normal terrestrial, but what kind of power it has is unknown. Yeah, that's, you know, that's about what I knew. Um, that's it basically for new Pokemon, but there are some, uh, more exciting things as far as competitive stuff goes. Uh, there, I don't know where it is on this page, but I do want to mention it. You are now able to craft these mochis that are like really cool. Um, we have no idea if the mochis are going to 
increase your stats because they're like EV training items, right? We have no idea if the mochis are going to increase your stats by what number, but if they're just a reskinned vitamin, that's going to be a little bit disappointing. Um, however, if they're like reskinned feathers and also like they're super, super abundant, then I'm happy about that. It makes it much easier to train your Pokemon when you just have, you know, like 999 HP mochi and it's like, okay, cool. I want 244 HP in this Pokemon, so I give it 244 mochis. It's a lot easier than doing the 24 protein or 24 HP up and then uh, four HP feathers. Like that can be a little bit annoying. So that could be really cool. The biggest thing about that though, that I'm not sure where they put it in here, I'm gonna hope it's right here. That's the only guess I'm gonna take. No, it's not here. Um, the mochi also has like a reset mochi, which means we finally have an EV resetter. Finally, we've been waiting for that this entire time. It kind of sucks that in two generations in a row, the uh, the uh, EV resetter was locked to DLC, but I don't think the casual fans really care that much about the EV resetter. Um, you know, they don't really EV train too often. So that's probably, you know, the justification that they give themselves. I'm still not a fan of it, but yeah. Um, other things to note, there is this, and this is like the non-competitive stuff, but there's this thing called the Blueberry League, and it just seems to be like a post-game thing that you can do where it's probably just a battle facility, and that's, uh, about it. Uh, other stuff that I can mention here regarding competitive, not too much, actually. I mean, like, uh, the trailer was obviously meant to just show, like, the new, uh, features and then, like, the, the DLC that you can play with, uh, but as a competitive channel, uh, not much of it interests me except of course for the selfie stick that you can now have the selfie stick is really important because now you can actually pose yourself next to your favorite pokemon wo chen and uh take a really fun picture with that uh but yeah oh here's the mochi yeah so uh ogre oust is a special event that has been passed down as a tradition in the katakami region since long ago your goal is to ride your pokemon collect berries and ogre balloons and bring those na, 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 na. uh you'll be able to try out ogre oust and blah 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 yeah, it doesn't actually explain the mochi too much here, so I'm glad that I just kind of remembered that. Uh, and yeah, here's like the photo stick. That's fun. That is a fun thing to do. Anything else I want to mention here? Um, I guess just Pokemon that we do have confirmation on returning. That list is expanding, but um, some important ones. Obviously, Clefairy is like a really big one that we saw in this trailer. Uh, Clefairy returning is pretty important because it is a Pokemon that has been historically phenomenal in VGC. Uh, of course, has access to the ability uh, Friend Guard and also Follow Me and Helping Hand and all those great support moves. Give it an Evio Light and it becomes a very annoying Pokemon to KO. And yeah, um, it's historically been a phenomenal Pokemon. We did see Politoed in the trailer, which is big. Um, one thing I did notice that you, it was very easy to like not spot if you weren't paying attention, I believe it's right here in like the Blueberry Academy page. No, it's somewhere here. It's, it might've been, oh no, the Battle League Club. Yeah, so right there, that is a Tyrogue. Let me try to zoom in. That's a Tyrogue. Um, Hitmontop is back. That's pretty big. I actually think Hitmontop is a Pokemon that could have done really good in this format. Um, it's a new Intimidator uh, in the game. Really decent Pokemon. Um, in Sword and Shield, it wasn't able to do as much because Fake Out stocks were down since Dynamax was like a hard counter to that. And also just, you know, Fighting type wasn't the best in that generation where Max Airstream was everywhere. Uh, but yeah, Hitmontop's back. That's that's exciting. I think that's about all I have to say um, regarding the trailer. I'm trying to think if there was anything left I wanted to cover, but I'm pretty sure I would see it on the Victory Road page um, if I wanted to talk about it. Uh, but no, I think that's about it. Um, not much else regarding uh, the DLC. So yeah. Uh, that's all I want to cover today. Just a quick little update video for anyone who's interested in competitive content uh, or competitive Pokemon. Just fun features we can look forward to and some uh, new Pokemon. If you enjoyed, you know, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, uh, and comment down below if I missed something. I'll give my thoughts down there. Actually, ask me a question in the comments and I'll give my thoughts to you down there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.